Hey guys, this is Jim, KN4YCD, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. So today we have this. What is this? This is an X0030ZZGUH. That's what this is, right? This is an RF test board. 18 tests in one board. So it says, um, I think it actually has more. There's some bonus testing in it. I received no documentation with it. I bought this off of Amazon. <clears throat> um, it was, I don't know, $18, $25, somewhere in there. It's, you know, wasn't real expensive. Um, let me zoom in for us. So this guy has connection points for all these different sorts of RF tests or demonstrates demonstrations. These are um, focus. The connectors on these guys, I thought these were MCX, but I don't believe they are. They're smaller than an MCX connector. Um, I was, you got two cables with this. It's the female end of this connector here out to a male SMA. They're about six, eight inches long. Uh, for hooking up to, you know, a nano VNA or whatever. And I need to find out what the name of this is, and I'll, I'll uh, find that out and put it in the show notes below. So we have a low-pass filter, and the picture shows the brake is about around 30 megahertz. High-pass filter, where the brake is around 100. A band pass, around 433. I believe... Because I don't know what BSF stands for, something filter, but I believe that's going to be a notch filter, kind of the inverse of that guy. Uh, these only have one connector and appear to be SWR related. I have not hooked this up at all. These tests, I don't know specifically what they are. Um, as there's no documentation, I'm not entirely sure what they're supposed to do for me. I suspect that the pictures would tell me some of this, but I don't exactly understand that picture, that picture. This looks like a capacitor, an inductor. I guess that's a resistor. I'm not entirely sure. Um, yeah, it could be. Because I see three components there. Those are all surface mounts. And so this is another kind of setup. Again, capacitor, inductor, and I believe that's a resistor. I don't know, that's not really the picture for a resistor, but I can't read the surface mount components in the camera, so maybe one of y'all can and can tell me. So, uh, capacitance, inductance, that's a capacitor and a resistor. If that's correct, I think it is. Capacitor and inductor, capacitor, inductor, resistor. So this is, um, I should know the name of this. These two different kind of circuits. These look like filters, maybe. I'm not. I'm not entirely sure what that's supposed to be telling me there. So I, I don't know. I'll have to do some research to find out what those are. And then down here, these are pretty straightforward. Short, open, load, and through. So you could use these to calibrate the nano VNA. And then we have minus 5 dB attenuation and minus 10 dB attenuation. All this is going to be low power. Signal level stuff, very low power. Obviously. And then uh, on the back, we have a Smith chart here. And uh, it looks like those are test points. All of those right there. So there's five, five of those points. And if I was better at reading Smith charts, I could tell you what those are. Um, I'm sure a couple of you probably know. I don't. I'd have to. I'll have to Google this because I I cannot read a Smith chart without without documentation right next to me. But those connection points, these silver connectors. For example, that one in the dead center. I mean, there's nothing on this side of the board right there. 
so I believe that those are test points and they might be related to to these tests very possibly without documentation I don't I don't know I don't know so anyway the board um, the construction of the board looks really good it's clean the solders are very clean um, so whoever put this together did a good job I have no uh, no beefs with the way this board is constructed so anyway um, I will uh, pause the camera here and then let's jump over to the spectrum analyzer and take a look at some of these functions on this uh, little RF test board okay so I've got us connected up here to the um, Regal DSA 815 spectrum analyzer and what we're doing here is we have and I'm going to move the camera so you can see this we have our tracking generator which generates an output signal connected to the input of our demo board on the left side and then the output of this filter is going to the input of the spectrum analyzer so we have this guy set up and, and pushing out a, a low power signal because we're doing this on a spectrum analyzer and what I wanted to show you is there's our our frequency output and quickly because I'm I'm sure that's probably kind of hard to read let me let me zoom in on the screen a little bit more there we go so let me put some markers on here the first marker we have is right behind the numbers and it's at 31 megahertz which you can read and we're down at minus 21 dBm is our input signal level and then as you can see the fall off here goes on down now I have us set to a frequency range of 554 megahertz total span so from 0 to 550 the filter is not super sharp if it was sharper I could narrow that range down and we could still see it but it's not it's not I want to try to get it all on the screen and if I change our stop frequency as you can see we lose some of the detail now the filter is still rolling off and that's still 30 megahertz there on the marker right there's our marker right down there and starting at around 30 call it 31.6 we drop down each block is 10 db so there's minus 10 db there's 20 db down 30 so 35 all the way to 40 so 40 dBm of roll off on that filter so this is truly a low pass filter anything below 30 you can see over here goes right on through no signal loss at all and then as the frequency increases the amount of signal decreases proportionately because of that filter so that is the low pass filter function let me turn off the camera and we'll jump back and take a look at the at the high pass and the band pass okay here is our high pass filter uh, this is set for 100 megahertz is what the board is marked at so you can see here our curve that's 45 let's roll on up to 100 the um, so there's a hundred this isn't a super sharp cutoff right so as we're below as we go below 100 megahertz which is this way then we're filtering we're, we're blocking that because this is a high pass filter which means it's a low block filter so once we get to 100 megahertz here which is where our markers at then um, then we start seeing a good bit higher signal level and if I change the span and zoom out some you can see that we've we're back up to minus 21 or almost full signal level according to the way the this is set this is our zero line essentially so <clears throat> 
this is doing the opposite of the um, of the other filter. Now I got to move this thing. I zoomed it so far out. There we go. So we have the opposite. We're blocking those lower filters and as we go up in frequency we're allowing it to pass. Let me jump out of this real quick and let's come back and take a look at the bandpass filter and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, I've got it hooked up to our bandpass filter and on this board the bandpass is uh, 433 megahertz. So that's about where we are. There's our markers at 433 and you can see that we're uh, where our filtering is. This is not the world's greatest uh, bandpass. It's kind of more of a notch filter than a bandpass filter because that's cutting our signal down at 433. If this is our signal line, right, we're letting less signal in here. So I think they have this, I think they have this board marked wrong or, uh, or I'm confused. <clears throat> because if we look at our if we look at our 31 minus 31 db line um, we're letting a little more signal in at 433 and indeed um, we've got more signal coming in at 433 but the drop off on it is very sharp because uh, at 430 let's see at 433.9 we're at minus 22 dBm and by the time we get to 433.975, we're at minus 26 dBm. We're down minus 3 already. So there's another 3. Now we're down 6, 9. Uh, you can see that's a pretty pretty steep drop off there. So I, I don't know that I would call that the world's best bandpass filter, but for testing purposes, we at least know what it's supposed to look like. We're coming out from the tracking generator. This is what's generating our signal. And we're going into our um, in the input of the spectrum analyzer. So you can see that's a pretty pretty stout fall off on that guy. In any case, that's all I have today. Guys, I'll, uh, I'll be doing some more testing with this and figuring out exactly what all the functions this supports. Um, this might be listed on the Amazon page. Um, I got no documentation with it. It was in a plastic bag in an envelope. So that's it. And I will post the link to it um, in the description of the video. I'll put all that information down here somewhere. And guys, I appreciate you watching the video. If you would, give me a thumbs up, like, and subscribe to the video. And uh, if you're not, uh, if you don't have notifications turned on, please go ahead and turn those on. That way you'll be notified when I post new content. Guys, 73, appreciate it. Have a good one.